Welcome everyone to another episode of Business Growth on Purpose. I'm Jose Palomino, CEO of Value Prop Interactive at valueprop.com. And this is another one-on-one -on -one episode. This is the third and final episode for now that I'm going to talk about something that I think really should matter to anyone right now who's actually doing well. That's to say orders are coming in. There seems to be this pent up demand that you're actually moving fast and hustling to fill and things are pretty good right now. Orders are coming in and uh, you're happy and you should be. Be thankful for that. And as I, I, I talked about this in, in the uh, two, two episodes ago when I went one-on-one -on -one with you, uh, so two Fridays ago, I talked about uh, really identifying your best customer and then their biggest problem and figure out how you can align with that to increase your relevance. And then uh, last Friday, I talked about how to protect yourself from uh, being in, for lack of a better term, in a bubble where things are going well right now, but maybe they don't stay that way. And so to make sure that you're always thinking about the future. So I just wanted this third thing is something that I know from working with lots of clients over the years in industrial categories, manufacturing, OEMs, industrial services. And I've been doing this for a long time and doing, uh, you know, value prospect over 15 years old, work with dozens and dozens of owners, uh, owner led businesses, probably, you know, under 30, 40 million dollars in size, you know, do corporate work here and there. But that's really my sweet spot where I love to focus on that owner led business where the owner has to come into work and make it happen. And they generally a local, one location, maybe two locations. They have anywhere from 30 to 75 or 100 employees. And they all matter to that owner. So right now, if you're that owner and things are going well, you're thinking, okay, well, you know, I, I don't know that I have to focus so much on things like, uh, you know, strategy, planning, marketing, because I'm just taking the orders. I'm just trying to, 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 to keep this, to keep the wheels on the wagon, keep customers happy and actually do a good job for them. That's good. You should do that. And that's absolutely happy times. Take the money, cash the checks, be happy. Except that those kind of times, the times we're in right now, this abundance isn't likely to be permanent. How do I know that? Because I have a crystal ball? No, because I, I can look back over the last, you know, my lifetime and just history. There's always uh, changes and revolutions and wars and pandemics and recessions and depressions and, and uh, you know, economic calamities, credit crunches, and all these things are just part of life, part of human existence. That has not changed. So it's not never ending prosperity. It's not likely. Uh, the other day I saw how uh, Yahoo, and for those of you old enough to remember, Yahoo predates Google as the first like real search engine. At one point, uh, the, the CEO and co-founder of Yahoo was offered $32 billion to sell the company. Uh, I think it was to Microsoft at the time, and he turned it down. The board eventually turned him down and he got moved out of the business uh, because he saw that the, the high valuation they had, he says, I'm going to double down. I'm going to grow it. Well, it, it recently sold the, the assets of Yahoo sold for a lot less than $32 billion. And the fact is he misread the times. Now, most of us, you know, myself included on this, uh, listening to this, um, you know, or, or, or watching this episode are not thinking in terms of, well, I, I'm turning down $32 billion. I'm just, really happy to get the orders I'm getting right now. But maybe you've thought over the years of how you'd change your business, how you would uh, adapt your business for the future differently, how you might actually add a different kind of service that you've wanted to do. Uh, maybe you would expand your line. Maybe you would actually say, well, maybe, maybe I'd want to invest in some new equipment or a new service. And I really want you to think not not in terms of investment to handle the volume that you're getting now. That's risky. I, I talked to an owner not long ago that had really invested because they were getting lots of orders in related to PPE, right? So everybody was, you know, very, how do we produce PPE and mask and gels and things like that? And 
had made massive investments in growing infrastructure, employees, processes, machines, and so on, only to have some of the big buyers, as things calm down, pull their purchase orders. Now they have all this capacity. That's not what I'm talking about. I actually believe if you're riding a wave, maximize the wave of what you got. But it's a great opportunity to think about how else can I leverage this moment, this abundance, to actually invest in the things we've been wanting to do? Things maybe you wanted to have, uh, you know, you, you actually wanted to work on a better uh, order entry portal for your customers so they can actually want to do business with you more because you're easier to do business with. Or you were thinking in terms of maybe rearranging your loading dock for efficiency. That's something that will not only help you now, but would help you into the future. Or, or maybe you're thinking, uh, wow, we're so busy, but we really do need some help with, uh, we do need those ISO certifications to be able to be competitive in the future when buyers get pickier again, which it's kind of inevitable. So you start thinking about those things. So look at the current moment in time, this moment in history. If you are enjoying more business than you can handle, you can't even staff for it. It's also a great moment to take a beat, take a small pause and think about what are the things we would like to do? How do we leverage this abundance? And, and the second thing of leveraging abundance is also thinking about top scaling your business. If you have abundant orders, then, and, and you know that you've always been fighting, especially if you're in any kind of contract manufacturing or any kind of like industrial service, you've always been pressured if you deal with bigger companies, especially in terms of margin. So think about it in these terms. How about if we really took this moment to top scale our business based on margin? based on the really profitable business we want to do. Now we can afford to maybe turn down some of the business that isn't that profitable for us. Or we price it up, and that's the best way, rather than turn it down, just price it, uh, walk away pricing, say we don't want to do, uh, we don't want to uh, turn those tubes for less than X dollars per tube, you know, generally because we've been fighting for 10% margin on that work. You say we want 40% margin on that work, and you price it that way. That may be temporary because again, as things level off, maybe that business goes away, but you don't mind that business going away. So that's a strategy you can start thinking about to increase margin. So think about two things from this abundant time. Actually three things, I'm gonna harken back to things I talked about in the prior episodes. One, make sure you use this time to get closer to your best customer. First of all, identify who they are. Think about their biggest, their biggest problem strategically, not just vis-a-vis -vis your product offering what you do, but just what's, what's worrying them, what's working for them. And think about how you better align to that. And, and, and really, this is the moment to become very valuable to them. And then think about in terms of those things that might be bubble oriented, be careful with that. I'm not saying don't invest in a new machine that will like eliminate three operations and, and actually let two operators do the work of five because you can't hire those three because they're not the extra three because they're not available. So you buy the machine, do those things, respond to the business, but be careful that you're not investing in things that are just for the moment and won't help you strategically. So you have to have some sort of a vision, a plan. And so that's what I help people do is figure out that plan for the future. Uh, and then of course, leveraging the good times now to think in terms of what else did we want to do that we always put off because it was a little tough, margins, you know, money was tighter and so on. Now it's coming in. Is this the time to bring in a specialist to help us with this certification or that replanning? That's another way, of course, you know, for those of you who haven't invested in lean processes and so on to get more out of what you have. It's easier to write checks when things are abundant it's a little harder to rethink it, but this creates more muscle, more long-term strength for your business. And then top scale your business. So you really think about the business that you don't mind pricing at walkaway pricing. And at the same time, you're really focusing your business on the stuff that you know strategically is going to be better for you long-term. So all of this is part of our philosophy uh, and of course, the name of this show, Business Growth on Purpose. These are things you can do intentionally. These are things we help people do by creating a real growth 
blueprint that takes all of this into account, looks out over the next 12 to 24 months. And that's really, I mean, you can have three year, five year, 10 year plans, but again, uh, the old saying is a uh, man plans and God laughs, right? So things happen, but you have to have a plan and it's worth putting some energy into it. And then just one final admonition, because I've heard this, especially in abundant times, I don't have time to do more marketing. I don't need more leads. That's really dangerous thinking, very dangerous thinking, because things can go, as we learned in March of 2020, things can turn very quickly. And then at that moment, you really wish you had a good lead gen process, a good marketing process, maybe to pick up not abundant work, but any work to keep you going. So this is really important that you think about it, that you should always be thinking in terms of how do we market better? How do we reach more of the customers we want to have? Unless you have them all and you have all the customers you could ever want of the kind that you always wanted, paying you the money you want to get paid to do the work you want to do. And that's 100 percent true across the board. It can always be improved. And uh, I think it's something you need to invest time and energy into even as busy as you are. So with that, to your success, this is Jose Palomino signing off. Thanks for listening to another episode of Business Growth on Purpose. If you like the show, hit subscribe and leave us a review to help other people find the podcast. And if you're ready to take the next step in driving intentional growth for your business, come check out what we're doing at valueprop.com. We've developed industry-leading programs and systems to help B2B owners take control of their growth. Until then, thanks for listening to another episode of Business Growth on Purpose.